In the last video, we discussed feature creation. In this video, we're going to talk about inputs, which is imperative for feature creation. So here in regular Fusion 360, in the regular interface, we can see that if I have a sketch and I want to extrude that, I can hit extrude here. Now notice all of the different things that I need to de define before I can create an extrude. So I need to tell it how far. I, I can optionally give it a taper angle, but I can tell it whether to do one-sided, two-sided, or symmetric. And then I can also tell it to be a new body, or if I want it to be cut, or join it with a, di a different body. All of these things are de defined in order to, to create the extrude. In the code, this is called an input object. A single input object is going to contain all of the information needed to create an extrude. So that input object is going to going to know how far it's going to be extruded. It's going to know the taper angle. It's going to know the direction, the operation, all of those things. So then once I hit OK, it's going to create the extrude. We can do the same thing in the code with a, an input object. So go into the help documentation here in the extrude features uh, help page. In order to add an extrude to the extrude features collection, we use the add method, dot add. Now notice the dot add requires the parameter of an input, um, an input object in order to, to add an extrude to that extrude features collection. So let's go ahead and start looking at this extrude feature input. So first of all, notice all the different methods. We can either do it as a set distance or a set all or a set one side. So all of these are defining, just like we saw in Fusion 360, is going to divide in this direction here. And then some of the properties here is, for example, like the taper angle, also the profile. Um, so all of these are going to be really important. So in order to create an extrude feature input, we can do it here. So extrude features dot create input. Now in order to create the input, notice that we need to give it a profile and an operation. So first the profile is going to be which profile you want to extrude. Usually this comes from a sketch. So we can grab it, a profile from a sketch, pass it into this, and then also the operation. The operation is, is what type of feature operation we want. So we can either have it like a cut, an intersect, join, new body, or a new component. Um, so all of these we can define as well. So once we pass in both of those, the profile and the operation, it's going to re, uh, return that input object. And then once we have the input object, we can further define things, for example, like the taper angle, or we can define uh, its distance. So if we want to, to set the distance, um, we do that uh, input feature object dot set distance extent, and then we can it, uh, either do it symmetric or not, and then we pass in the distance. So let's go ahead and look at this through the code. So uh, in the previous video, we saw that we created this extrude. So we grab the extrude features collection. And then within that cr collection, we did dot create input. This is going to create our input object. Now remember, I we need to pass it in a profile. I have a profile from this sketch. So I just did sketch.profiles. So my first profile from that sketch, I named it profile. And I'm passing it in to my extrudes. So I pass in a profile, and then this is the feature operations, and this will be the code for your feature operations. So um, I'm choosing the new body feature operation. So now that I've done that, I've created an input object called extrude input. Now, in order to further define things on this extrude input, we're going to do, um, for example, set distance extent. Now, in order to set distance extent, remember, I can uh, tell it whether to be symmetric or not. I'm not going to make it symmetric. Um, and then also I need to pass in a distance, which I define in this line here. So the extrude distance is just a value that I created to be 8 centimeters. So we create the input object. We're defining its distance and what type of uh, direction it's going. So it's just going to be set distance extent. We could also do like set all or uh, set it to be symmetric, um, etc. So once we have this input object defined, we pass it in to the input or the extrudes dot add um, and then we add it to the collection so that's how we create the extrude um, <clears throat> let's go through one more example here it's going to be the circular patterns so let's actually go back to the help page and up to the circular patterns feature 
So a circular pattern feature. Now once again, in order to create a circular pattern, we use the dot add function and it needs an input. So once again, we can go to circular pattern feature input and see what this kind of requires. So in order to create the input, we once again use this function. So circular pattern object dot create input. And this is a little bit different. It needs input entities and then it needs an axis. Input entities, if we read down here, it has to be a collection. It can't just be um, a single body. You need to create a collection, pass in certain bodies into that collection, and then and then and then that would be your input entities. So uh, if you need to learn more about that, you can click here on the object collection, and then we also pass in an axis. So once we pass in um, the bodies that we want a pattern and an axis, it's going to return the the input, um, the feature input object. And then we can further define things. So we could do, um, we could define it as symmetric or not. We could give it a quantity. We need to tell it how many times it's going to be patterned. We uh, also need to give it a total angle. And then there's some other things that we could do as well. So let's look at that in the code. So remember, first of all, I grabbed the circular pattern features object collection, and then I and then I pull from that collection down here circular patterns dot create input and to create the input remember I needed the input entities I needed a, a collection so I've defined that up here I have first created the collection and then I've added an extrude which is here that we made earlier I've added that extruded feature into the collection and then I passed that input entity collection into here so the first thing is it needed some input entities so that's my input entity and then it also needed an axis. So I'm just using the, the Z construction axis that I defined in the line before that. So once we pass in those two parameters, we now have a circular pattern input object. So in order to define the, the quantity, once again, I just do circular pattern input dot quantity. And then I define that as five. I can also define the total angle. I, I gave it a total angle of 180 degrees. Um, I told it not to be symmetric. So all of this code here is just used to help define that input object. Then we pass that input object into this function. So this, the circular patterns collection dot add. And I'm going to add, or I, I give it the input, and then it will create this um, and add something to the circular patterns collection. So and then if I run this, we'll see that it created here. Um, I have a second body there, but it it grabbed um, my first extrude, patterned it five times over 180 degrees. I made it not symmetric, so um, so it's not mirrored or anything. So that's it for input objects.